old Alabama gardener. Let's grow some yellow summer crookneck squash. Good evening, folks. I want to give you a little heads up about this video. Uh, this is going to be showing me growing my yellow crookneck summer squash. And I, and I have a, a, one that I have saved from seed here. Easy to see how it gets its name crookneck, isn't it? There you can hear the seed rattling in there. So these will be seeds for this year's crop. Now, I'm do, you may say, well, why are you doing this video right now if it's not this year's crop? And the answer is so that you can follow along this year with me in planting your squash and you'll be having the same success. I'm going to show you the details in this video of exactly what I do. I'll show you in detail the fertilizer I'm using, how I pollinate these female blooms because there's hardly any bees anymore. And finally, I'll show you me picking it, cooking it, and of course, at, uh, toward the end, we'll do a taste test. So I encourage you to watch it all the way to the end. Watch me actually cook the squash in what I call a traditional old southern uh, style. And then you'll see me do some taste tests. So you know, anytime when we're talking about yellow crookneck summer squash or zucchini or, or pumpkins, uh, the question always comes up what to do about the squash vine borer. There's basically two pests. The squash vine borer is one of them and the other one is the stink bug. So we'll talk about those at another time. But we still got time right now because we're only in the first part of March. So we still have plant time for our 2019 planting to take preventative measures to keep the squash vine borer from destroying your crops. So in a, in a soon to be coming video, I'll tell you and I'll show you what I do to stop that pest from destroying my summer squash plants. So stay tuned. Now I'm in zone 7B, growing zone 7B. But this is the timeline that you can use no matter which growing zone you are in. Now I'm using cups here because that's what I have today. And remember, I always say, water it well, watch it grow. Now this stage is called potting up. And I usually do it about the time the squash plant is getting its first true leaves. And I'm going to go into slow motion here because I want to show you me putting some granular triple 13 fertilizer around the outside of this uh, plant. Then you want to go ahead and fill the pot all the way around. And always, always, anytime you do something with a plant, whether it's starting a seed or potting up or transplanting it, always water it. Now squash plants have both the male and female blooms on the same plant. And so what I'm going to show you here is a plant that has two male blooms. And you'll notice that long stem coming off of the uh, bloom and going down to the main plant. And you'll notice that there is no small squash. And now we're going to look at a plant that has both a male bloom and a female bloom. And the first thing you notice is that the female bloom has a small yellow squash 
between it and the main stem of the plant. And then as I touch the male bloom, you notice it does not have a small squash between it. So that's how you tell the difference on these, uh, on the squash plants. So what I'm going to show you now is how to hand pollinate squash. Now this is a male bloom and we no longer need the petals. The petals are there only to attract an insect. And so we don't need them. What we want to do is open it up so we can open it and get that pollen out of there as you see me shaking it there uh, onto the female bloom. But what I'm also going to do is continue to take that petal off and now I'm actually going to touch the male portion that I have in my hand to the female portion that's inside that bloom. And I'm transferring the pollen from there to the bloom. Now here, where I'm showing you, pointing to it or touching it with my fingers, is a small baby squash that the female bloom did not get pollinated. And if you look close, you'll see it starting to kind of shrivel up or to dry up. It didn't get pollinated, so it's going to die and fall off. So I might as well just go ahead and cut it off. I like straight rows, so I'm using a string to uh, mark off my straight row here. Now I'm laying my ruler in the trench and placing a mark or a cross mark at four foot intervals. That's a beautiful row of green onions there on my left side, isn't it? Okay, now I'm going down each side and I'm take out one shovel scoop of dirt and come back on the other side and do the same thing to uh, create the hole for the plant. I use both commercial fertilizer, that's what the triple 13 is, and I also use organic fertilizers, which I mix up. Here are the fertilizers I'm going to use. The red bucket is compost. The orange bucket is earthworm castings. The white, the granular powder is triple 13. And the white powder is a mix, I mix up, of organic fertilizers. And we got some uh, azomite to go in each hole. First I'm going to add a big handful of compost, a big handful of earthworm castings, some triple 13, some azomite, and some organic fertilizer and mix it all around in the bottom of the hole and set a plant in there and pull the dirt in around it. I'm also going to add a top dressing of all of the same fertilizers around the top of the ground and then you want to pull some dirt over the top of that. In other words, cover it up good. Now here, you take a good look at my row of Squash. I think there's, uh, I think it's 19, 18 or 19 plants in this row. So usually each day there will be some new blooms on the plant. So that means that each day you've got to come out and do some hand pollinating. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. How I hand pollinate once the plants are in the ground and growing. So I have a male bloom there. And I'm going to tear a little bit of the petal off of this female bloom right there. You see this small baby squash. And that way I can get to the uh, flower parts that needs to get the pollen. All you got to do is just rub it around on there and there. And that will transfer the pollen to the female bloom. And so here's the male bloom. I want to tear the petals off of it. So I can get that little part down in the center there onto the female bloom. So here we go.
Now you can also use a very soft artist brush as you see me showing you here. And what you would do is you would twirl it around inside the male bloom and then go find you some female blooms and twirl it around inside the, the female bloom. This is the male bloom that I'm twirling the brush around in and now I'm going to over here to a female bloom. If there's more than one female bloom, I'll twirl it around in each of them. Or if there's more than one male bloom, I'll twirl it around in there, picking up as much pollen as I can to transfer to the female bloom. So if you have plants like squash, uh, cucumbers, cantaloupes, watermelons, pumpkins, and they're blooming, but they're not making fruit, it's probably because they're not getting pollinated. There are hardly any bees anymore. And so the only choice you got is to do hand pollination. Now I think yellow summer squash is best when it's about maybe four, five inches long and it's still going to be tender. If you wait much longer than that, it starts to get hard. Okay, let's cook some squash. First thing, of course, is I'm either going, I'm going to wash them, I'm going to cut the stem end off, and I'm going to cut the bloom end off because it tends to be a little bit hard. And then I'm going to slice the squash crosswise, as you see me doing here, in about one quarter inch, you could go three eighths of an inch if you want to, type uh, size slices. Now I'm showing using a half a cup of flour and a half a cup of cornmeal, but all that's important is that you use equal amounts of those two ingredients. And you put them in a bag because we're going to add the uh, squash to that bag and shake it all around to get the squash a good coating before we start frying it. Add a little bit of salt if you want to, or if you're not, leave it out. And then shake that bag all around to get your ingredients mixed and start adding the squash. Make sure you shake it all around good to get a good coating on all the various slices of the squash. And then we'll get ready to cook it. So whatever oil you like, get some in there. I don't really use a thermometer to measure the temperature of the oil, but when I put a chopstick in it, as you see me doing it here, and that chopstick begins to sizzle with those little bitty bubbles, then I know it's ready. Now I'm going to continue adding squash and actually I'm going to build it up in the form of layers because I'm not trying to produce crispy slices of squash as you'll see in a moment as we get this cooking going. So build it up, have, have maybe four, three, four layers of squash. Now once it starts cooking, uh, obviously those pieces on the bottom are going to start browning first. So get in there with a spatula and just turn them over move them around and then it'll continue to uh, cook as you see in this picture here.
Now, as I turn this squash over here, you're going to see that on the bottom, it's actually getting quite brown. And all the little pieces of squash are starting to get soft. Uh, some of them are uh, almost up to the point what you would call mushy. And that's where we want it. We're about ready to eat. Okay, let's plate it up. So here's our squash. Uh, I call this a southern style of cooking. Now, of course, there's other ways uh, to cook squash. You can cook them with a little bit of onion. Uh, you can make them into a casserole, uh, things like that. But this is pretty much a southern way of cooking squash here. And uh, so let's give it a try and see what it tastes like. Maybe a little bit hot. <laughs> mm. Very good, and there's hardly anything that I can think of that resembles the flavor of good, fresh, summer squash. That's really, really good. I like it. Mm-hmm. I can I, I can make a meal just eating squash. Be nice if I had a sliced tomato to go with it, but just squash is very 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 good. Have another bite here, and then we'll do something else. <laughs> when food brings a smile to your face, you know it's good, and this is really 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 good. So, let me get a little bit here. You know what I'm going to do now, don't you? <laughs> I wish I could share this with you. I wish you could just have a bite of the squash like this. I'm sure you'd love it. Um, I'd probably have to fight you for the rest of this, what's on this plate here. But uh, can't do it. you got to get out there in the garden, plant you some squash, grow your own, Get in here and cook it. Nice bite here. Hmm. That is good. Really, 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 really good. Well, I'm going to finish this up. So we'll talk with you later.